if you follow this training, you could easily double the amount of time you can hold your breath while underwater while surfing. What's up? My name is Kyle Russ. Welcome to my channel, Hydro Mind. All we do here is talk about how to improve your surfing by getting stronger between surf sessions with training. So when I'm talking about your breath hold time, I'm talking about a surf specific breath hold. And what that means is holding your breath while under stress. That means tired muscles, a high heart rate and peaked adrenaline. So holding your breath like you'll have to in the real uh, ocean environment, right? So the best practices of breath holding in the past have all come from free diving, which are great. Love free diving, love free divers, love all the information that comes out of there. What they do is different, right? They lower their heart rate, get as calm as possible to do these extreme breath holds. When you're surfing, you don't have that opportunity. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to everything you need to know from step by step. It's going to be three parts. Um, in each part, I'm going to show you a new trick that's going to help you extend your breath time, hold time a little bit more. When you put it all together, be able to hold your breath under stress reliably for a very long period of time. So a good test to see how you improve while you watch this series of videos is you can test yourself. So in my training program, the Waterman Elite, we test this stuff. And um, I call it the one minute club. So can you hold your breath under stress for one minute? Most people who do this for the first time get about 15 to 20 seconds and then eventually get past a minute. So those people are tripling, quadrupling their breath hold time with a few things. There's the technique, actual breath holding technique, but there's also what I call attributes. So you're like your physical attributes, like you're changing your physiology. So your limits are getting better and better. So uh, the test goes like this. And I recommend you do this test right now um, before you implement these things I'm about to teach you because you can see your baseline and watch yourself grow. Um, so the test goes like this. You do 10 jumping jacks, just 10. Then you get down into a plank, hold your breath on an inhale as long as you can. Like I said, most people get these alarms going off in their body and their mind instantly and their breath hold time is just like bloop, down to like 15 to 20 seconds. I've had, I've, I've given this test to man, definitely hundreds, probably over a thousand people. And the comments I get back are people like, wow, I really got to work on my stressed breath hold, or I had no idea how hard that was, or I thought it was a lot better than that. That's because people don't practice doing it the real way like this, right? So there's it, a whole different technique, which is what we teach. So this is what we build. So my goal for you for watching these is to get you into the one minute club. So um, let's begin. So the way I teach it, I teach breath holding with what I call the three alarms. I've been doing this for years. It breaks it down so simply so you can know exactly what you need to do. So if you look at a breath hold, this represents a timeline. So this is the, when you first hold your breath, zero seconds. This is the end, blackout. That's the maximum breath hold time. Along the way, you have alarms that go off that let you know that your oxygen is being depleted. First is physical. Tightness of the chest. Diaphragmatic contractions is a big one. Um, most people have, can't even hold their breath long enough to get those contractions because they don't have the physical requirements in order to do so, which I'll cover here in a minute. And then the next is mental. So mental, um, and these things trigger each other, right? So they set each other off. The physical alarms will set off the mental. The mental will set off the emotional. So if you look at, so physical goes to mental. Mental is your thoughts change. So when you're in the first third of your breath hold, the physical part, you're going to notice like you're not uncomfortable. Everything's fine. But then as soon as you start getting those physical alarms, like the contractions or the tightness of the chest, you'll, your mind will switch to I'm okay to, oh, I'm not okay. So those thoughts in your head will trigger off the final stage, which is the emotional fear and panic. So if you, uh, if you panic, your breath hold time gets cut to zero or it ends right there. No matter how far your maximum blackout would be, if you panic, so like let's like say your maximum breath hold time is one minute. If you get panic right in here, your breath hold time is really 30 seconds because you've cut it in half because you panic. So pushing it back, all these things, you have to have them all. They'd work in that order. And the goal of this style of training is to push these all back farther. So your physical alarms come later, your mental alarms come later, and your emotional alarms come later or not at all, which is, which is an elite level, but still possible. And the cool thing about that is that will allow you to maximize your complete breath hold. When you're doing this over and over um, in repetition and practice, um, those alarms aren't gonna come off as early when you're underwater and it's going to, they're not gonna trigger each other the way they would normally if you didn't have training and your total breath hold time will become fully realized, especially when you're underwater. So this video, like like I said, it's going to be three parts. I'm going to t cover each one of these alarms in each part. So physical, mental, emotional. So this part right now, we're going to deal with the physical alarms. So let's get started. All right. So to push back the physical alarms, you have to push back your tolerances to the gases. So number one is tolerance to low oxygen. So the amount of how well your body can function on low levels of oxygen. So this extending that, that tolerance, that's your fully realized um, breath hold time. So that's time until blackout. So your tolerance to low oxygen, because low oxygen, makes like you black out like the elevators doors start closing um so extending that will extend your full breath hold time that's a really important one and that's something we focus on more than anything and in my training i call it low oxygen training 
So it's intentionally starting at an oxygen deficit in training. So your body becomes more efficient with oxygen. So oxygen efficiency is a term I use all the time. What that means is our bodies are adaptation machines, right? If you trick it to think you're in a low oxygen planet, let's say, your body will start to change. It's, uh, it's really, really cool. Um, if you see, um, let's say, when, when astronauts go up into outer space because there's no gravity, their body is instantly on day one realizes we don't need this muscle. We don't need this bone density. There's no weight. We're weightless. So they start atrophying instantly. So they'd come back to the earth. They'd be completely weak. And that's how quick it happened, right? So they started giving them resistant stuff to exercise out in space. So when they came back, they wouldn't be so weak. So let's flip it. Like what if you were to go to a high gravity planet? You're all of a sudden, you'd weigh twice as much. So your body would get ripped your, and your uh, bones would become more dense. If you came back to earth where it was lower gravity, you would be superhuman. And that's actually the story that the comic book writers used to explain Superman. He came from a high gravity planet, comes down to earth, and now he's flying circles around everyone, picking up taxis and all that stuff. So if you do this low oxygen style training and you're paddling out there with people who aren't, you can paddle circles around them and hold your breath longer and stuff. So really, really cool to use that power of adaptation. So instead of a high gravity planet, we're simulating a low oxygen planet. Um, and that, and because your body recognizes that, the same way it recognizes high gravity, so it builds more bone density, it recognizes low oxygen and it upgrades your cardio system. So that's a few things. It's increased lung capacity, lower resting heart rate, and actually makes your body produce more red blood cells. So the lung capacity allows you to take bigger inhales. You have more oxygen to use. Lower heart rate allows you to stay calmer. And that's that's a good indicator of aerobic fitness. And then the more red blood cells increases your oxygen carrying capacity. You got more blood, you can carry more oxygen at one time. All those things are what I call together oxygen efficiency. So that's the low oxygen one. The second side is tolerances to high CO2. So as you're burning CO2 or oxygen, it converts it to CO2. As it accumulates in your body, that's what gives you the urge to breathe. Low oxygen doesn't give you the urge to breathe. That's what running out of it makes you black out. High CO2 makes you, because you want to expel it, right? You want to blow it out. So that's what's giving you the urge to breathe. So this will trigger, in partially will trigger the diaphragmatic contractions. So if you've, ne I, I get people who say this all the time, they're like, I'm trying to do the breath hold. I'm not getting the contractions that my breath hold ends. That's because their CO2 tolerance is very, very low. It gives them that super strong urge to breathe way before the contractions come. So as you extend your, or increase your CO2 tolerance, you're, you'll be able to get to those contractions reliably. Um, and so those are contractions, they look and sound like this. It's the lizard part of your brain involuntarily being like, okay, we got to get rid of the CO2. We need oxygen in here now. So it's involuntary um, and it can't be controlled. And once it starts, if you've never felt it before, they will trigger the mental um, alarms. So those are the two gases. The third one that I don't hear anybody talk about is increasing your pain tolerance, holding your breath very uncomfortable. So we could actually really call this a tolerance to discomfort because it's that's what it is. You can't hold your breath so long that you're in like horrible pain. It is just discomfort. So once you realize that and you do it more and more and more and more, you'll you'll fully realize that you can handle it. That it is, that's no reason to panic, that it's normal, right? So that's what's important about all these physical things. And so as you're building these tolerances, I mentioned it a bit, you're going to be upgrading your physiology. So the physical alarms are a reflection of the state of your physiology, meaning how good of a shape are you on in or how good is your body prepared for breath holding? So the better it's prepared, the way, way farther you push down those physical alarms. Um, um, so it's lung capacity we talked about. A lot of people have something that's called inverted breathing where they don't fully inhale, completely fill their lungs. It's super, super common. And to correct it, you have to do it in training. Um, there's an institute that corrects this stuff down in California, and they say that it takes 3,500 to 5,000 conscious repetitions in order to correct uh, inverted breathing. But the cool thing about training is if you do it properly, you can get that done in a few weeks. So it's really, really important to fill your lungs completely. The lowered resting heart rate I've talked about, and it's really, really cool. That's a cool one that you can measure. I use a smartwatch and it's like, you don't, it takes time that one. They say like a, there's a, you can find charts of this stuff where it says how good of a heart rate it should be for your age. And mine is constantly below 50. Um, so, so the best I've had is like 45 to 50. So it's in that range. It changes a lot, beats per minute. And according to those charts, that's a 18 year old marathon athlete. And I'm 
137. So that's great. And, I, and I'll tell you something really, really important about that. I don't do long form cardio. I don't do anything to do with marathon style training. Um, I do low oxygen training and which I call um, new age endurance because for those marathon runners, it's the, like say you go on a two hour run. It's the two hour mark where you're really pushing your limits and really getting those cardio gains. But when you do low oxygen training, you're starting at a deficit. So that finish line meets you in seconds, right? So your cardio system gets upgraded um, without ever leaving your house, which is great. So um, that, I'll, I'll put that out there. It's a huge advantage compared to long form cardio. So all this stuff I'm talking about takes seconds to find your limits, which is cool. And then the last thing is the blood I mentioned. So that's something So your body being an adaptation machine. There's a dark side to adaptation because you adapt to having free oxygen everywhere you go. Um, so when you're sitting on the couch, you're at work, you're watching TV, you're driving, you're doing anything other than training, you start to lose it, right? So um, we incorporate something that I call a uh, lifestyle training. Um, so the, the hardcore breath training exercises that give you the biggest boost you do in a controlled environment. Um, that's all, that was all you're doing. Whereas lifestyle training, you you do in what I call transitional periods. So it's when you're in the shower, watching TV while you're driving, while you're walking. So you can stay on the positive side of adaptation all the time, which is so, so important. So that's pretty much it for the physical. And the cool thing about this stuff is this will give you understanding the physical alarms could get you to the one minute club in itself. Depends what kind of shape you're in, depends what kind of um, cardio fitness you're starting at. But um, focusing here, if you only focus here, you'll get a big boost. Um, but like I said, these alarms trigger each other. So if you have great physical um, training, but you don't have the mental and emotional training, as soon as those things trigger, bam, bam, you'll be at panic. And remember, like I said, panic will end your breath hold. So we have to push back the rest. We, to do this kind of training, the physical stuff, the, the lifestyle stuff can and should be done every day. The hardcore stuff, less. And it's not necessary to do two things. You don't need to do hardcore breath training every single day. And you should never be pushing yourself to blackout. Um, I've never done that. I say in the regular training where you're standing, um, I only do say go until you have a medium to strong urge to breathe. So that's like 50 to 60% of your maximum breath hold. And when you're on the ground, you should only go to like 75%. It's debatable. Lots of people say that there's no benefit to holding to the end to the blackout. I believe you should feel your limits at least a few times so that if it does happen to you underwater, it's not a surprise. So, cause that, that'll trigger, trigger emotional alarms. But as far as increasing your limits, physically, mentally, and emotionally, you do not need to push yourself to the, to the limit in order to grow these things. Just like, just like lifting weights, right? It's like, you don't do a one rep max. You just do a whole bunch of like medium weight, high reps, right? Exact same thing with breath training. Your body will adapt quicker this way. It's way safer. And you, yeah, like you just, you just don't have to push yourself through that. It's, it's dangerous in itself. So um, that's all I got for physical alarms. So, so reliable. I really like to say um, when it comes to breath training, breath training only works for people who have lungs, a heart, and a diaphragm, right? So that work means it works on everyone. If you're breathing oxygen now, this training will work for you. It's so, so reliable. Our body's ability, ability to adapt is so predictable that you just got to give it the right things and your body automatically tapes all, takes the optimal path. So if you're watching this video and it's brand new, video number two will be coming out soon. Um, or if you're watching this later, it might be available right away. So physical, start there, do your test. Um, and let me know in the comments what your time was. 10 jumping jacks, hold your breath as long as you can in a plank, put it in the comments, let me know your time, and then we can uh, check back on video three to see where you got to. My name's Kyle Russ with Hydro Mind. This is what we do every day, helping surfers increase their surfing, their wave count, their wave quality by training, getting stronger between surf sessions at home. Again, my name's Kyle Russ, thanks for watching. All right, so pushing back the physical alarms is about two things, upgrading your physiology, changing your body, there's also a technique to it too. So I'll show you what we do, um, and that's the low oxygen training in order to upgrade all those things I talk about. So what I would show you is going to increase lung capacity, it's gonna lower your resting heart rate. Um, it's that new age endurance where you push your cardio system really, really quickly. So what you do, so I'll just get you to test it so you can feel it. So first thing, hold your breath on an inhale and do a bunch of push-ups. See how long it takes you to get a strong urge to breathe. So I'll do it here. So big inhale. Okay, I gotta keep going. I just didn't wanna make it too long. So I can hold it for a long time, right? Now, the flip of that, blow out all my air. Lungs are empty. See how quickly I get an urge to breathe. So you'll see here. Whew. 
Whew, see, that was quick. So what it does is it lowers the oxygen in your blood. Oh, like, you know when you're at the hospital, they put the thing on the finger and it says um, the oxygen in your blood. It's usually in the high 90s. Well, when you do this, it'll lower that by about 10 to 20%, depending on how hard you push yourself. But yeah, that's significant. Like if that, if that were in the hospital and you were like having like a medical emergency, that would be a concern, right? But because you're doing it in training artificially, it's not like a fact, it's not caused by something negative. Um, it's like a stressor used to make you stronger. So it's not dangerous, but your body still recognizes that the oxygen has been lowered. So it upgrades your cardio system to compensate it because you still need the same amount of oxygen, but you're gonna need a stronger cardio system to deliver it more. So it's tricking your body to upgrade itself. Like I mentioned, the simulating a low oxygen uh, planet, right? Super, super cool. Um, so lots of ways to do that. So push-ups is one way. You can do it while you're walking um, and count your steps. You can do it while doing squats, do it with the paddle training, so many different ways. Now, just the hold is just the beginning. There's lots of intricacies in order to keep yourself hungry for oxygen and stretch it out. It'll have to be a different video. It's way more intricate, but that's the basics of it. And so for the technique, breath holding technique, a couple of really important things to do. So when you hold your breath, you have to hold your breath with your epiglottis, which is in your throat right here. So if you hear me make this sound, it's coming from right there. That's about the place where you hold it. So that means you don't wanna keep any air in your cheeks, because if you do, that air's not in your lungs, it's not being absorbed. But as well, if you have ever had problems with getting water up your nose, I know some people do, it's because they don't hold their breath right here, because it creates back pressure. So if you've ever, like if you're drinking out of a cup with a straw, put your finger on top of the straw and it holds the water inside it, because it creates that back pressure. That's the same way as right here, right? To create the back pressure there, water can't come into your nose because there's the pressure in there. That allows you to hold your breath better. That's proper breath holding technique. The second thing is not to make the pain face. So don't hold your breath like this. Don't tense your face, your neck, or your chest because your physiology, your nervous system just takes the signals that it, that it gets from you and the environment around it. So you make that pain face, your nervous system just knows, okay, danger, we're in stress. So it actually releases adrenaline and elevate your heart rate. So that makes your breath hold time shorter. So it's a calm face, hold your epiglottis. And one thing I always do, doesn't matter the size, the wave, where I'm at, I always, I always protect my head like this. So it's easy to stay, so you're not flailing around, you're not trying to get to the surface or anything. You're just, you're like, you're just calm, hold your head. And oh yeah, eyes closed too. Eyes closed is a big one. So processing visual information takes energy from your brain. Your brain needs oxygen for energy. So it's about, 20% of your oxygen goes to processing your senses, so mainly vision. So if you close your eyes, it gives you more oxygen. So when I do the training even, my eyes are typically closed, especially when I'm doing long, more drawn out exercises. And yeah, that's about it for the physical stuff. So in the next video, we're gonna be going on to the mental. So how to push back the mental alarms um, and how to make them almost a non-issue. Um, and it's, it's cool, just easy techniques, just like this stuff too. So make sure you stay tuned for that next video. My name is Kyle Russ with Hydro Mind. Thanks for watching.